Today's message is presented as three brief meditations, each focusing on a different aspect of how music plays a wonderful and powerful role in our worship experience. There are three brief scripture passages that each of these reflections is linked to, but there is a fourth text which contains a larger main theme. It comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 10 through 12. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its towns lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. Music connects us with God. It is a mystery how music shapes the human spirit, but it does. Music makes us happy. To sing it, hear it, and share it. And music moves us to profound contemplation, reaching depths that are otherwise inaccessible by mere words or intentional reflection. Music helps us say things we have trouble speaking in words. It offers a means to proclaim our love for God that comes not only from the conventional thoughts of our minds, but from the more emotive, heartfelt, spontaneous parts in our souls. With music, we discover accents of wonder and dimensions of awe that are otherwise inexpressible. Music lifts us to God. Music remains with us, embedding rhythms, tunes, and words within us without our even knowing it. Music is a principal means by which we can explore, discover, and receive spirituality. Music opens the door to the interior life and helps us bring God into our daily life. The melodies of European hymn writers, the rhythms of the people of Africa, the cadence of Native American influences, and the acoustic American folk sounds. All branches of the Christian family have used music to reach for God, to listen to God, and to praise God. Music affects us by writing truths upon our hearts in a manner that we will carry with us wherever we go. We learn the content of the faith more easily with the rhyme and rhythm of lyrics and music. How many times have we find the refrains from the recent worship replaying through our minds? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Our God is an awesome God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Music makes spiritual truths poetic and memorable. Music grants the pleasure and leisure to ruminate unconsciously upon meanings long after we have consciously repeated them. When we leave worship, music goes with us and carries us forward into the week. Music has an undeniable unifying effect. Where else do non-musicians join their voices with others to sing? Rarely outside of national anthems and carols at Christmas parties do people experience singing together with others. We are unpracticed in the power of singing together and what that truly means. Singing together rehearses community. Sharing our individual gifts leads to community outcomes that far exceed the sum of the individual parts. Harmonizing voices reflect the harmony with others we seek in the world. Singing lifts us out of ourselves and truly binds us together. He who sings prays twice. These words are from St. Augustine of Canterbury, who was the founder of the early church in England. Since little of Augustine's thoughts were preserved in writing, we have little idea what Augustine meant. There are some interesting reflections on the meaning, however. One writer on worship and liturgy notes that music speaks to the heart, while the written and spoken word is comprehended by the intellect. When you combine them, there is a powerful interaction which led Augustine to say, He who sings, prays twice. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 27, Paul reflects on those times when we are at a loss for words, but have something to lift up to God. Paul speaks of the Spirit interceding for us in those times we cannot find the words. 
We do not know how to pray as we ought, says Paul, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. What I was thinking about as that quote from St. Augustine came to mind was the great wellspring of music carried by African Americans in their spirituals. How could they find the words to express the heartache they carried in slavery? Their families broken up and sold away to others, not allowed to learn to read or write. How could they express themselves? The music and the spirituals carried powerful messages of hope and faith that were a lifeline that kept those people going through very dark and oppressive times. Listen to how Robert Snazzy writes on the meaning and power of that music. Snazzy says, Slaves in America used music to bind their hearts to God and to one another, to inspire courage, to relieve suffering, and to express their aspirations for freedom. Slaves found the passageway to another reality through music, preaching, and worship. Music provided not an escape from, but an embracing of reality that granted a measure of spiritual freedom that paved the way to political freedom. Christians sing their way to new life. The story is Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. The legend says that Sarah Shepard tried to kill herself in the Cumberland River in 1847. She had been told that she would be sold down the river to Mississippi, but her baby daughter had not been sold. This tragic separation called forth her vow of suicide, and she might have ended her life but for the word of an old woman prophet who prevented her. Wait, said the woman, let the sweet chariot of the Lord swing low. There is a great work for this baby to do on earth. So Sarah Shepherd made up a song to sing to her baby. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. She sang it for her, was sold to Mississippi, and was forced to leave her daughter Ella. Ella Shepherd became one of the first classically trained black musicians and was very successful. In 1878, she was able to find her mother Sarah after a separation of over 30 years and to bring her to her home to live. The song Sarah made up for her daughter Ella not only inspired her to a life of music, but she made it come true literally. We in the Methodist tradition can be especially proud and thankful that three generations of one family did so much to gather and preserve the great music of the Afro-American spirituals. John Wesley Work, his son, and his grandson, John Wesley Work III, all taught at Fisk University, and the entire Christian world owes them a debt of gratitude for writing down that music and preserving it for us to sing and enjoy today. There are parts of our faith that are beyond explanation, beyond words. Paul touched on this in his poetic passage about the folly of the cross. To the unsaved, the message of the cross is pure folly. And yet to those being saved, it is a message of great hope and power. From the letters of Paul onward, every generation of preacher, teacher, and theologian have struggled on how to convey this vital message to new generations. Some of the most powerful and enduring messages on the cross have come to us in and through music. Here how Robert Snazzy expresses how music goes beyond words. He states that music touches places in our soul where no sermon could ever reach, penetrating where no words could ever go. He also says that music puts spirit into us, raises us up, and brings us soberly to face our own mortality. Sermons inform us in important ways, but music takes us on a trip to the other side of our brain where fact, data, rationality, and objectivity end like a pier extending over a sea with unfathomable depths. He also says that music allows us to jump into the deeper waters of the soul and into aspects of community and grace that we cannot begin to consciously understand. Music caresses the unconscious and subconscious and preconscious parts of the human psyche. Why would we not be curious to discover and recover its power? Music helps us attend to something both primitive and present, both elemental and sophisticated. It's hard to imagine the spiritual life without music, 
and the world opens to us. And yet, how it affects us remains a mystery. Music is a means of grace. Remember Broadway musicals? One of the signs that a show was successful was if members of the audience were humming a tune they heard in the show. They left the theater with a song in their heart. Paul was talking about the song in the heart as he wrote to Christians in Ephesians 5, verses 18 through 20. Paul asked, in effect, what dwells in your heart? Is it wine and debauchery and the concerns of this world? Or are you filled with the Spirit, which causes you to sing psalms and hymns that praise God? What is the soundtrack of your life? In the household of my childhood and youth, there were often the musicals of Rodgers and Hammerstein playing in our living room. I still have the lyrics and melodies of songs from South Pacific, Oklahoma, The King and I, Flower Drum Song, and The Sound of Music drifting through my mind more than 50 years after I first heard them. I guess I am showing my age, but I am concerned about some of the music younger generations are listening to. I am concerned about the stupid, violent tone of heavy metal music, and more particularly, death metal, which far too many of our young troops make their soundtrack when they go into battle. But, thank God, there is another kind of music embedded in the hearts and minds of our young people. The tunes are of their praise songs less familiar to us, but the message is one we know very well. It tells the gospel message about the love of God in Jesus Christ. Martin Luther, the great leader of the Reformation, understood well the power and importance of music to carry and convey God's message. Luther said, Next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. It is noteworthy that Luther took popular tunes sung in the beer halls of Germany and changed the lyrics to tell of God's grace, goodness, and glory. Luther was literally putting into practice the calling of Paul to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. Amen.